pull strategy is a well-known business paradigm. Put simply, a company that uses a push approach develops a product or service and drives sales through marketing and advertising. An organization that uses a pull approach, on the other hand, develops a product or service in direct response to an existing customer demand. In the information age in which we're living, it's much easier for manufacturers to create products that cater to consumer desires. Digital technologies make it much easier for corporations to get direct access to their customers and allow them to respond to their needs more quickly. Dell transformed the personal computer industry with its pull supply chain strategy. It provided customers with a platform to build their own computer on demand from a menu of parts, components, and consumables. The company saved money by maintaining low inventories of finished goods and attracted buyers to its product through quick and easy online ordering and home delivery. In the cosmetics industry, the YouTube beauty blogger revolution has created a platform for pull rather than push marketing. After watching a makeup tutorial on, for example, creating the perfect winged eyeliner, consumers seek out the products used in the video. No matter what the industry, corporations are increasingly being pushed to do more pulling. The new culture secretary, John Whittingdale, has recently announced a root and branch review of the BBC that will include an assessment of whether the broadcasters should produce commercially popular shows like The Voice. This got me thinking about how the push-pull paradigm applies in the cultural sector. To me, these types of shows reflect the BBC's understanding that it has to pull viewers to its channels in order to push more challenging and innovative programming. The best examples of push-pull in the cultural sector come from the music industry. The digital dissemination of music via platforms such as iTunes, Spotify, and XM Radio allow consumers to customize their listening experience. There's no longer a need to buy a 12-track album to get the two songs you like, or to turn the dial of the radio endlessly to find your favorite song. The musician has the freedom to release a song whenever inspiration hits. From a business perspective, this is supply chain efficiency. The producer, supplier, and consumer are in perfect alignment. However, how are we to be exposed to the next great Southern rock vocalist, or the song that signals a new genre of music? Traditionally, the radio disc jockey saw his or her role as playing what we want, as well as introducing us to something new. The DJ carefully balanced pull, taking requests from callers and playing top-ranked songs, with push, using their expertise and access to music industry knowledge to select new music for the listener. Curators, the DJs of the museum world, tend to focus more on push, but things are changing. Contemporary art curators seek out new artists and introduce their work to the public through temporary exhibitions. However, institutions like Tate and V&A do balance exhibitions of new or obscure art and artists with more surefire audience pleasers, such as last year's Matisse's Cutouts and the David Bowie exhibition. However, the Royal Academy is bravely embracing the pull approach. It is using the Kickstarter crowdfunding platform to raise money from the public for an installation by the Chinese contemporary artist IYY. If insufficient funds are raised, the installation will not go ahead. But if it does, the RA can be sure that it will have an audience base and visitor interest. This is supply chain efficiency at its best. However, would this have been possible 10 years ago? before curators from around the world supported and exhibited IYY's work to new audiences. When it comes to culture, art organizations must do both pushing and pulling. Whittingdale's argument appears to be that the BBC should not compete with commercial broadcasters who could produce shows like The Voice and instead focus on distinctive programming. In essence, Whittingdale is contemplating restricting BBC to a push model of operation one where the BBC will need to convince the large majority of the TV-watching public to watch its shows. I certainly support all efforts to ensure the BBC does not stop producing high-quality arts and news programming in favor of audience pleasers. However, I think the genius of the BBC's approach, notwithstanding the overabundance of property location shows, is that it mixes push-and-pull strategies. The BBC is like a DJ playing some of the things you know you like, but then offering something new, unusual, or challenging. 
The BBC's iPlayer is particularly important to the strategy as it allows audiences to dip in and out of programs they might find interesting, but may, may not consider appointment TV. If the BBC were to become known as a channel that produces programming that is good for you, but you probably don't like, the possibility of audience crossover greatly diminishes. Furthermore, the BBC risks becoming an organization disconnected from the breadth of the UK viewing public. The current model allows there to be a continuous internal organizational dialogue about the diverse interests and needs of the UK population. The current TV license fee funding model supports a mixed push-pull broadcast strategy, as it requires the BBC to reflect the tastes of the entire viewing public in its programming. Hence, each show has a push-pull element to it depending on the taste of the individual viewer. An approach based on a push-only strategy suggests the BBC completely funded through government subsidy. However, Whittingdale is not suggesting this, nor is he suggesting that the BBC should fund itself commercially, which would orient it to a pull strategy based on highly rated shows. He suggests a revised public funding structure that requires either viewer subscription or a revamped license fee based on the German model. But what is the German model? Well, as you can see from this graphic, not much different than the BBC's model. I think the BBC is on the right track with its current push-pull strategy. I know this because in a world where I have iTunes to predict what music I like, I watched BBC's Later with Jules Holland to get exposure to something new. Last season, one episode of Later featured British favorites Noel Gallagher and Mumford and & Sons, as well as 70s funk master George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic, South London's ghost poet, Senegalese poet Cheikh Lowe, and the debut of an Ethiopian Finnish singer named Muriel Wagner. The music pushed and pulled me from side to side, a truly enjoyable experience.